Hey there. So 837, this is the number of emails, WhatsApp messages, phone calls our team received in the first five days ever since USMLE announced that tectonic change of uh, step one going from a three digit score to pass fail. So worried potential applicants, current applicants and parents, they were all calling us. So we thought let the dust settle down and we'll do a video on the potential impact. You know, what 15 things we think will change with this uh, USMLE policy change of making step one pass fail. Additionally, we'll give you some tips on how you can change your profile, what things you should be focusing on. If you are in a situation that you will be applying after this change has been implemented. We're also going to talk about which specialties are being impacted by this uh, pass fail change. Will all specialties be equally impacted or are there few specialties more impacted than the other? We'll also give you some insights into what IMG or Caribbean profile we think will be impacted and will the match rate change going forward. So watch on, share this video with other friends who may be impacted as well and do subscribe to our channel. So if you are an IMG or a Caribbean applicant who may be impacted by these changes or if you are uh, probably spouse of an applicant or a worried parent, we are going to talk about 15 things that we think will change when this policy comes into effect, when step one changes from a three digit score to pass fail. We will also give you some tips that you can use to change, to modify your profile, things you should be focused on now because we are also going to talk about what programs will change in their evaluation criteria. So once you know what programs are now going to change in how they evaluate the IMG applicants or the Caribbean applicants, you can modify the profile accordingly probably focus more on certain things and less on say preparation time for step one. So all this and much more in this video. Watch on and all the best. Let's take a minute to explain what actually changed. In fact, Dr. George Koshi Vilanilam wrote a blog for us, which I encourage highly to read. It's on our website. Now this blog goes into a fair bit of details on the sequence of events and the potential impact. Always our goal is to separate the reality from the hype and give you some very clear actionable steps. Now briefly, there have been two changes. First, in about January 2022, step one exam changed to a pass fail and Secondly, you'll have to pass step one before you can take the CS. The second change is not all that significant. I'm not going to go into details of that change in this. It is the first change that has created a lot of discussion, not only among the IMG community, but also among the AMGs and the program directors. Dr. Vilanilam points out in his blog, this could have far reaching repercussions. But first, let me clarify. This is not a conspiracy to eliminate IMGs from the system. Every decade or so, they evaluate the residency admissions process and make changes. So many of you may remember the USMLE scores used to be a two digit score till about some years ago. Also, I remember the time when programs could selectively offer some spots in match and offer other spots as a pre-match. Of course, all that has changed. So no, this policy change is not directed against IMGs, though of course it will impact IMGs for sure. In our opinion, not in a dire way. Let me now cut to the chase and explain. So first, if you are applying in September 2020 or even September 2021 for the residency starting in say July 2022, you can be rest assured there will be no change. It will be status quo. Step 1 will continue to be reported as a three digit score. Things are likely to change if you are planning to apply in September 22 or later. Now when exactly? There is no clarity yet, but it will be announced likely in few months. Second, let's say you got a three digit score but applied for match after the change has been implemented. What will happen then? 
Well, most likely the scores will be masked and reported as a pass. They could also report the three digit score, though I consider that highly unlikely. Again, expect USMLE to issue clarity on this as we get closer to the transition date. Third implication, which many of you already know, scores have been an objective criteria for programs to assess an applicant. Now that leaves you only with step two CK. So spending six plus months to prepare for step one will likely not benefit your application. Previously, students who did poorly on Step 1 had a second chance to show their test taking ability by improving on Step 2 CK. Now they have only one shot to prove themselves to the residency program. Without getting into the details of when and how AMGs will now start preparing for the CK, for the community programs that consider Step 2 CK and those who have traditionally been friendly to IMGs, they will continue to screen IMGs with Step 2 CK and it's the only remaining objective metric for IMGs. Also, as Dr. George points out in his blog, the average step to CK score of AMGs is greater than that of the IMGs. So it's all the more imperative that IMGs focus on acing this exam. The fourth change is likely to be the step three implication. It will become more and more crucial. Of course, many programs on the East Coast in internal medicine and psychiatry, for example, have already been expecting step three scores for a few seasons now. And they use step three as a criteria for their interview and for inviting applicants for interview. It will now become almost an expectation across all IMG specialties. The fifth implication is going to be on step to CS. Of course, uh, no change uh, other than the fact that it can only be done after passing step one, which kind of makes sense. It is reasonable to expect some demonstration of success before doing a more advanced test and it saves applicants money. Remember that a fail in step to CS will be much more of a handicap than before. Now let me come to the specialties which will be impacted as part of my sixth implication. If you guessed internal medicine, then you are correct. IM is one traditional IMG specialty which focused on the scores the most, and this will see the most flux. Most other IMG preferred specialties like family medicine, pediatrics, neurology, psychiatry, or pathology have had lower scores requirements. So the impact in terms of profiles which they select will be much less. Psychiatry, for example, was already considering step three scores along with research. Likewise, for neurology, research has always been traditionally more important. If you are questioning the highly competitive specialties and what will happen to them, like radiology, you should know that these specialties look for well-rounded profile. And while scores are important, other factors like your research, home country, residency, etc. are also valued highly. So in short, expect impact on IM primarily. But what kind of impact, you may be asking? Does it mean that the match rate of IMGs will go down or just the profile of IMGs matching will change. That brings me to the seventh point about the match rate. The overall match rate for IMGs is unlikely to be adversely affected. As you know, it's been going up steadily and it's close to 53% in 2019. What may change is the profile of the IMGs. Now, what you can control or not control on your profile might be the crucial difference here. So let's spend some time on the profile related aspect that you need to consider. And that brings me to the eighth point, which is the year of graduation. The YOG will see an increase in its importance. Most programs prefer YOG within three years, while others maybe within five years. So going forward, continue to expect more recent IMG graduates to be given preference. In short, don't delay the match if you can. The ninth is the advanced degree or home country residency. Again, a part of your profile. Advanced degrees like MPH will continue to be beneficial, especially also the home country residency. Always beneficial. If your year of graduation especially is more than five years, this will continue to be important. And as I've mentioned in several other videos, our students, Sarthi students with home country residencies have seen overwhelming success in the match. So if you have have it probably it's an advantage. The tenth 
point again related to your profile but probably something you cannot do much about is the medical school brand name this will become increasingly important setting amg schools aside the caribbean candidates from well-known schools and imgs from well-known schools in uk india ireland pakistan philippines are likely to have an increased chance of standing out now this will be an inevitable bias that will come in so colleges like aims maulana azad lady harding from india aga khan and dao from pakistan you can imagine that their brand name will push these students ahead of the queue 11th is the us clinical experience of course you can control this and this is where imgs will have to work even harder you need to be able to focus on obtaining electives early on before graduation electives and hands on experiences generally pave the way to a very strong letter of recommendation since these letters can vouch for your clinical skills now an observership may be fine if that's all you can get but the letter writer may be less inclined to describe your clinical proficiency and you don't want to end up with a generic letter of course if you're looking for help with externships or elective rotations do check out our website and we can help there as well now let me come to the next point number 12 which is about the letters of recommendations now the problem with removing the step one score related to letter of recommendation is as follows earlier you could compare students from different schools based on the letter of recommendation for example a well uh, known school compared to a student from not so well known school uh, if they had done good rotations with similar kind of lor strong lors they would be on the same same footing so in this case of course strong letters from top tier programs will help you increase your chances even if you come from not so well known college who you know how well you know them and how strongly they are willing to vouch for you will matter a lot now that being said a strong letter from a community program is still much more valuable than a generic letter even if it is coming from a top tier program where you did your rotation so keep that in mind of course uh, we at usmle sarthi do guide our enrolled students on how to get a unique customized and impactful letter of recommendation we'll likely do another video on lor in coming days so you can know more about the letters the 13th point is the medical student performance evaluation or mspe this used to be called dean's letter for uh, some of you who may remember now this is perhaps the most underestimated part of the img profile and is going to become very very important program selection committees continue to discuss how important msps are in their selection process but as imgs this is foreign to us and we all know how difficult it is to get even a generic msp from our home country medical schools so what you need to be able to do is have key comparison statements in your mspes for example mr x was in the top 5% of his class out of 200 in internal medicine rotations and so on and statement like this candidate is an excellent candidate for residency all these in mspes will help the programs understand and let you stand out this also lets the program know that your school likely evaluated you in a standard and objective way so you have to make sure that the mspes are very well written again for our students uh, the sarthi students we'll continue to make sure that we guide you step by step on mspes in the coming season related point is on medical schools transcript likely no change can be expected but wherever possible you can insert wordings or sentences like that of mspes that'll be beneficial so you know if you can do it have your the next point 15th in this case is about research this will be an increasingly important point depending on of course on the specialties now absolute number of research experiences or publications abstracts etc for successful imgs will only be known after a year or two of implementing these changes but considering that this is a quantifiable metric the importance of research will likely increase even for recent graduates in other words try doing 
research projects in your medical schools and hopefully you can get it published even if it's not in PubMed index journals. Now I know what you may be thinking. There's no faculty support in my college. There is no infrastructure in my school. Well, you got to try your best and do what you can. Again, we have courses on research that can help you if you need it. next point is on volunteer experiences. This will undoubtedly be of increasing importance. Now the onus is on IMGs to stand out in any way possible and build a well-rounded application. So non-medical volunteer experiences, entrepreneurship, leadership roles, all will get much more important. In fact, many of the Sarthi students we have worked with have entrepreneurship experiences, have led teams, they have hobbies that are fairly unique and all these have helped them in in their interviews and this is certainly you can do as part of your medical school as well some examples again could be fundraising for your community taking leadership role in hosting some conferences even if it's at a small scale perhaps even explore some startup ideas using technology in healthcare then the next point which can be of impact is honors and awards. Needless to say, these will remain important, but you will need to highlight the importance of the award, for example, to help stand out. For example, if, if you can say was awarded Jones Prize for the most innovative research proposal from a pool of 1000 applicants, etc. in some conference, that will be very, very useful. 18th is directly related to your personal statement. Now, likely the personal statement will not change in any substantial way over and above what you've been doing till now. But as always, an impactful personal statement, like we say at Sarthi, can make programs curious enough to invite you. It will be very critical to get your personal statement reviewed multiple times and attempt to start preparing it for at least a couple of months in advance. Like I mentioned, we guide our students in their personal statement and ERAS application and each one of them is reviewed by physicians and journalists. Finally, with all these drastic changes, residency programs will likely lean on step 2 CK and step 3 as a filter mechanism where importance of step 2 CK obviously is going to be more than step three. This will trigger a cascade of changes in other areas of the residency application process that I've just outlined. So those were some of the changes that we think will happen once the USMLE system for step one goes into pass fail from this three digit uh, scoring system as of now. As you know, uh, things are still not clear in terms of the actual timeline and how some of the other details will be worked out. I will keep you posted as and when we hear about them. So subscribe to our channel and uh, all the best in your USMLE journey.